Hello students, welcome to the session. In this session, we are going to study about lasers from unit 1 optics under paper 3rd. So, the content of this topic are what is laser, characteristics of lasers, the differences between ordinary light and laser beams and the types of electron emission. So, what is laser? So, laser is nothing but it is a device which is used to produce light by optical amplification based on stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation or we can also define it as a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, laser means the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Now, this laser has several characteristics. Let us discuss one by one. The first one is directionality. So, the ordinary light spreads in all direction and its angular speed is 1 meter per meter but it is found that laser is highly directional and its angular speed is 1 millimeter per meter and this is about directionality. The next one is high intensity. The laser has high intensity. It means since an ordinary light spreads in all direction, the intensity reaching the target is very less. But in case of laser, due to high directionality, the intensity of laser beam reaching the target is of high intense beam. So, laser has very high intensity. The next one is monochromatic or monochromaticity as the name indicates mono, single wavelength. So, laser beam is highly monochromatic. It means the wavelength is single. Whereas in ordinary light like mercury vapor lamp, many wavelengths of light are emitted but in case of laser it has single wavelength. The next one is coherent or coherence. It is an important characteristic of laser beam. In lasers the wave trains of same frequency are in phase. The radiations given out is in mutual agreement not only in phase but also in the direction of emission and polarization. So, it has one important property that is coherent. Due to this coherent property, the laser can focus on very small area which is nothing but it has very high intensity. So, these are the important characteristics of laser beam. Next, we will discuss the differences between ordinary light and laser beams. Under ordinary light, the angular speed is more or angular spread is the spreading of light under ordinary light is very more. In case of laser beam, the angular spread is less. Under ordinary light, they are not directional but laser beams, they are highly directional. And ordinary light, it is less intense. Intensity is very low but in case of laser beam, it is highly intense. Under ordinary light, it is not a coherent beam and is not in phase means it has no coherence property but in case of laser beam it is a coherent beam and they are in phase. The radiations are polychromatic for ordinary light, the radiations are monochromatic for laser beams. These are the important differences between ordinary light and laser beams. Now let us discuss some kinds of lasers. Among the various kinds of lasers some important types of lasers are like this, they are solid state laser, gas laser, liquid laser, dye laser and semiconductor laser. Next, Einstein explained the action of laser beams based on quantum theory of light. The production of laser light is a particular consequence of interaction of radiation with matter. The interpretation of interaction is done on basis of ideas related to energy levels of concerned system for which light is to be obtained. Now, there are three possible ways through which interaction of radiations and matter can take place. They are induced absorption, spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. Very important, induced absorption, spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. Let us discuss one by one. First one is what is induced absorption. The transition of atom from ground state to higher energy state on absorption of energy by supplied externally. Look at the diagram. The first one represents before absorption and the second diagram represents after absorption or after excitation. The next one is spontaneous emission. After excitation, atom will spontaneously transit from higher energy excited state to ground state. 
while this is nothing but it emits photon this is about spontaneous emission the third one is stimulated emission emission of photon whenever an atom transit from a high energy excited state to low energy state which influences of an external agency that is inducing photon so these are the three steps induced absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission next is the two necessary conditions for stimulated emission the first one is metastable state and second one is powerful source of energy so metastable state is nothing but the energy level metastable state means it is the energy level where lifetime of atom is of the order 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 2 seconds next some important definitions under this one is population inversion a state of achieving more number of atoms in the excited state compared to ground state in this we can achieve more number of atoms in the excited state compared to ground state that is nothing but population inversion the next one is lifetime the limited time for which particle remains in the excited state it is about nanoseconds a very limited time that is known as lifetime so the basic laser system components the first one is active medium this is the basic material in which atomic and molecular transition takes place leading to laser action it is a medium where the stimulated emission takes place the second one is pumping source with the help of energy source the system can be raised to an excited state with the help of this source the number of atoms in higher energy state may be increased and hence the population inversion is achieved. The third one is optical resonator. This is a set of mirror at the end of which they are silvered one end being completely silvered at which the other is partially silvered. The photons are emitted parallel to the axis of active medium which undergo multiple reflections between them. So the light intensity can be increased. Next is the application of lasers the lasers application we can observe in military applications the first one is to find the target an infrared camera on the laser continuously scans a 6 to 10 mile radius around the airport for suspicious heat emissions when it finds a plume it really relays the coordinates to an identification and tracking system which is also an unit and second one is to destroy missile the laser beam emits a burst of intense light which is aimed at the missile's most vulnerable spot usually the explosive compartment simultaneously it sends a signal to airport control tower to give authorities a fix on the origin of the rocket next in case of industry to drill tiny hole in hard material for welding and machining for lining up equipment precisely especially in inaccessible places and also in medicines to break up gallstones stones and kidney stones to weld broken tissues to destroy cancerous and precancerous cells and many more these are the applications of lasers in different fields and this is about references thank you